Hey everyone, today I want to show you how you can bring life to your still images using Adobe Photoshop and Premiere Pro. Essentially, I'll be bringing these still images into Photoshop, breaking the various elements into layers, and bringing those layers back into Premiere Pro to animate them. Let's get started. Okay, so let's say I'm working on a short form documentary project about Obama, and I was given this photograph, I have to use the photograph, and I want to bring a little bit of life to it. I mean, it's a pretty boring photograph, so I want to create some movement to it, something beyond just the standard animation of a scale up or a slight position movement, something a little bit more dynamic. So what can we do here? Let's open this up in Photoshop and start to tear this apart. So to do that, I'm gonna grab my photo over here. I'm gonna go to Edit, Edit in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, now I'm inside Photoshop and I want to create two separate layers. I want to remove Obama from the background. I wanna have a background layer and then I wanna have just the isolated Obama shot here against a transparent background. So the first thing I wanna do is go down here and duplicate my layer and I'm gonna have an Obama layer. And then, okay, so I have my background here and then I have my Obama layer here. With my Obama layer selected, I want to isolate just Obama here and cut out the background. So to do that, I'm gonna go over here to the quick selection tool and I could go through and just start to select like this, but if you look up here, there's a select subject button. So if I click this, it's gonna say it will discard my current selection. That's perfectly fine. I'm gonna click okay and then it should process and automatically select my subject here. This is kind of a tip, uh, so look at that, it's already a pretty good selection too. So the lesson here is work smart, not hard. So let's take a closer look and see how it did. It's looking pretty good aside from in the hand here. So I'm gonna hold the Alt key with my quick selection tool and I'm just gonna kinda tighten this up a little bit. Okay. Look at that, just within a few seconds, I was able to get that selection there. So now all I need to do is invert this selection. So I can go to select, inverse. Now you can see my selection here. And now I'm gonna hit the delete key. So I deleted it, you can't see it because I have the background layer. And there we go, we have that deleted. Actually, let me undo that because I wanna refine this selection. So I'm gonna go to select and mask and then I'm gonna add a, just a little bit of a feather here. I don't wanna to make too many adjustments. And select OK. And then we'll delete that again. There we go. Okay, so we have Obama kind of isolated here. So let's go ahead and turn this layer off and let's go to our background here. Okay, with my selection still live, I'm going to inverse it again. Select inverse. And now I want to basically remove Obama and paint over him. So one way I can do that is to use, basically fill my selection in with the content aware. So I'm going to, before I do this, I want to expand my selection so that none of these edges kind of get picked up as I fill it in. I don't want any of that being picked up. So to do that, I'm going to go to select, modify, expand, and then I'll expand this selection by let's say 35 pixels, and I'm gonna apply it at the canvas bounds as well, so it'll come down here and expand. Select OK. Okay, so now we have a nice little buffer edge in between our subject and our background. Now I can go, whoops, I have the wrong layer selected. I'm gonna select the background. Now I can go to Edit, Fill. It'll bring up the Fill dialog box. And you see here it says Contents Content Aware. This is how it's gonna fill it. So it's gonna take kind of the surrounding area and fill it. I have color adaptation selected. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. It might take a few seconds here. Okay, you can see it covered up with this blue color, but you can see there's some pretty harsh edges in the middle here. So what I can do is I can go grab my patch tool here and I'm gonna to start to clean this up. I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect here. And I'm just gonna go through really quickly down and dirty, kind of fix some of these edges. Doesn't need to be perfect, thankfully, for this particular photograph because it's slightly blurred and, you know, we don't need to worry too much about it. This is where this particular effect can be, it can be quite complex or very simple like this in this example, but you can get some other photographs where if you don't have a good contrast on your edges, this can be kind of a very hard uh, effect to pull off. So you need to kind of analyze your image before 
so that uh, it doesn't require too much too much work here. Just kind of clean some of this up. Now we have a background here. Let's zoom out. And there we go. Now if I turn this Obama layer back on, I grab the selection tool. Now I can, whoops, wrong layer. Again, I need to select this layer. Now I can move them around. There we go. So our layers are now separate. And now I'm going to save it as a Photoshop file. So that's where we'll get our layers from. I already have my J original JPEG here, but we'll save it as Photoshop. Go save. Now if I go back to Premiere, all I need to do is import that. So I'm going to double click in my project panel. I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to grab that PSD file. And now I'm going to import these layers as individual layers. But we can and we can import them in an actual sequence. So let's go ahead and do that. Sequence, both of those layers are selected. So now it's going to basically import a sequence with the layers. So now if I open up this sequence, you can see I have my Obama layer and then my background layer. Now here's where the magic comes. I'm going to open up the effect controls panel and now I can start to keyframe the scale and position. Let me just slightly change this, maybe scale it down ever so slightly. And then move him over here, scale back up. We want it to be subtle, we don't want it to be too much, just a little bit of movement, ever so slightly. And now if we move this background, scale it up to 110 maybe and then change the just change the position don't, again we want it to be subtle we don't want it to be too much so there we go now we have a little bit of a 3d effect let's look at this full screen you can see this photo was quite simple. The edges are quite clear. The background is blurred. Again, this was this was a very simple one. This can get quite complex if you have things that are overlapping. Um, but again, this is a very a very boring photo that I could just put a little bit of life into by separating these two layers.